Tasmania, or Tassie as we call it, is the smallest state of Australia, an island that sits just under, down under, on the 42nd parallel in the Southern Ocean. Whilst one of the most mountainous islands in the world, only a few peaks exceed 1500 metres, so there are no permanent snow lines and very little snow melt. This, along with its temperate maritime climate, make it a perfect place for trout to thrive. Trout over were introduced to Tasmania back in 1864, rendering these fish as the first to survive in the Southern Hemisphere. From here, they were transported to Greater Australia and New Zealand, giving birth to world-class fisheries. This makes our trout the wildest and untouched, and what lures fly fishers from around the globe. A good friend of ours, David Anderson, defines twig water as the top of the watershed, past the main river, up the branch, and into the twig water. Twig waters are small and intimate fisheries. They often carry an oversupply of eager, rambunctious trout, and it's not unusual for two or more fish to launch at your fly. It's exciting, it's fast paced, and you need to cast quickly and wade continually upstream if you want success, as opposed to fishing a pool. Because these creeks start off as springs in the mountains, the water is crystal clear, and with granite sandy bottoms, the fishing is entirely visual. On warm days, insects begin to emerge from overhanging tussock grasses and shrubs, only to dive to their death, giving anglers much sought after sight fishing. Whilst the habitats vary from dense rainforests to open grasslands, the fish behave the same, competitive and willing to take a single dry fly. As soon as the day warms, twig waters bear many hatches. Most notable are grasshoppers, small brown beetles, caddisflies, damselflies and baited mayflies. A particular highlight is the snowflake caddis hatch. These caddis hatch in large quantities and hover around the edges in cloud-like swarms and look just like snowflakes falling from the sky. It's beautiful and trout leap to great heights to catch them. trout, like their waters, are smaller, averaging from 8 to 16 inches, but are highlighted by intense burnt orange spots, often enclosed within a white ring. It's hard to forget such an unusual coloration, especially the adipose fin, tipped with a single red spot. They're in perfect shape, unmarked by predators and hatchery rearing, making them a delight to catch. Brown trout are normally territorial fish, so you get one in a pocket or a pool and that's about it. The twig waters are a bit different though, there's perfect spawning everywhere, so the maximum capacity. Each pool's got a couple fish in each run, so quite often they've got to race and fight each other for your fly. And to have brown trout being that aggressive, that's pretty unusual and pretty cool. The gear on the little creeks is, as you'd expect, pretty light rods, two to four weights somewhere between seven to eight foot six. I like the longer eight foot six, gives you flexibility to reach over log jams or around tussocks. And when things get really tight, you can still sneak off a good bow and arrow cast or a roll cast just to get those fish in the tangles.
So our waters are quite clear, but there's still this bit of a stained colour called tannin. And tannin washes out of the eucalypt and gum tree forests. It's a natural sort of pigment. Leaves the water coloured a bit like tea sometimes, or a bit blood red. It can look really cool and gives the brown trout a bit of extra colour. So Tasmania is completely different to mainland Australia. You might see on Warner Brothers it shows Taz the Devil in a desert. Well, it's completely wrong. We're a mountainous little island affected by the oceans. So they've got lots of rain from time to time. We've actually got quite a lot of mountain ranges, so the trout fishing is really good. We've also got a lot of isolated lakes, like a thousand of them. And they're shallow, they're clear, and they're full of wild trout. And that's where we go up in the summer from November till April to sight fish with a dry fly to large brown trout. There's no other place that looks like Tasmania, especially our mountains. It's a subalpine area, we've got tall forests, some of the trees are five or six hundred years old, some of the biggest in the world. We've got all this weird and wonderful sort of low shrubs of different colours and most of them quite spiky to stop all the wallabies and wombats from eating them. Most of those things you'll see each day as well, we've seen echidnas, wombats, wallabies, eagles. It's a pretty cool place to come, it's like fishing in a zoo. Everything's wild around you though, it's even better. Mornings are probably my favourite time here. If we're laying in the hut and we can hear there's no wind, we'll get up about five, make a quick coffee and walk down to the lake. There'll be mist and fog pouring up from the surface and with a bit of luck, tails cutting through the water. Fish grubbing around after mayfly nymphs in a couple inches of water. That's when the fun really begins. We've got long leaders, 16 to 18 foot and we've got to put the fly within maybe 30 centimetres or a foot. 
So these mayflies we call black spinners, they hatch out like March browns or brown drakes you might call them, size 10 or 12. And pretty quickly, within an hour or two, they've shed their skin and they're jet black spinners. And this is what drives the fishery out here. They hover around calm patches, sheltered bays, warm rocks that sit in the sun. And the trout cruise the flats looking for them, grabbing them from the air. These fish get in ultra shallow water, usually in the mornings and evenings, but sometimes throughout the day if it's nice and cloudy. And their fins are out, often their tails sort of waving in the air like a bonefish. The best of it though, you'll see dorsal adipose, rear tail just cruising like a shark. We just call them sharking around. Really exciting stuff, really challenging. You've got to put the fly exactly in the right spot with a long leader. But if you enjoy sight fishing and dry fly fishing, it's one of the best places to do it in the world. Fishing out here really is hunting. You've got to find the fish, and when you find them, you've pretty much got to be on the money, perfect with your shot. With the tailing fish, you want to be maybe a metre away from the fish to where the fish is heading. And if the fish doesn't see the fly at first presentation, we give it a twitch, and hopefully the fish cruises over and just smashes it. Really tough work though, you've got to be on your game, and that's part of what makes it really exciting, really challenging. If you can beat the fish here, you can beat them anywhere. <laughs> 